There's not too many things that can be as stressful as building a home. It is a daunting task. Whether you act as your own contractor or you hire a contractor, it can be stressful. All it takes is one wrong move. One simple mistake can cost you thousands of dollars. Now, building a home is not only one of the most stressful things you'll ever experience in your lifetime, there are certain circumstances that will arise when building a home. You see, when a home is built, completely put together it weighs thousands and thousands of pounds and all of that weight is either going to rest on a slab foundation like this one or it's going to be on a raised pylon crawl space or footings now when it comes to all of that weight to think that house is not going to move and you're not going to have settlement with any property that you built well that's just naive you see when a house is built it's made to move it's made to withstand any movement a house has to breathe and a house will expand and contract very similar to us and our bodies when we're exposed to heat and hot weather we tend to swell a little bit our rings fit a little tighter on our hands however when it gets cold the opposite happens we shrink the same goes with the house. Now this information is not to scare the hell out of you or to freak you out, but it's important to know that when you build a house, whether it be your custom home or you're building it with a builder, you have to know that there's going to be some sort of settlement. It's okay. And look, the same goes for every piece of building material. They expand and they contract. Even concrete expands and contracts. You'll notice that you'll see cracks in crown molding, cracks in trim around doors will open up in the winter months but they'll close in the summer months and this is why it's so important to know that homes made today are made with products to withstand the movement for example whenever there's windows or wood whenever there's cracks and crevices that where two components meet they're typically sealed with a compound or solution or a caulk if you will that's made with a product that when it does expand and contract it moves with the home but look, we need your help. We need your feedback. Have you ever bought a home or bought a new home or had a home built? Would you ever do it again? Let us know. We'd like to hear your opinion. Now, when you're building a home, and I'm in a home that's currently being framed up, when you're building a home, you're going to see these blocks. They call fire blocks. So if, Lord forbid, a fire were to be in the house and I'm standing in what will be the kitchen, this right here will slow that fire from creeping up the wall. So it's very popular to have huge open spaces like the one I'm standing in in this home. The way they do these big, large open spaces is they have laminated beams. As you can see, this huge big beam here, which will span 20 to 30 feet. And in doing so, those boards are so thick and so strong that you don't need any other support but that board helping hold up the roof system. And look, as I'd mentioned, if you look behind me, you're gonna see fire blocks all the way around the property. They're everywhere. They're everywhere around this property. So typically a lot of fires start on the ground and as they start on the ground, it will prevent them from creeping up. But the opposite can also happen. You see, if a fire were to start in the attic and come down, this right here would slow that fire. So maybe you've built a new home, maybe you've bought a new home, and you can attest to this. Just because something is new doesn't mean it's not gonna break. There's many, many components in a property, HVAC, stoves, dishwashers, water heaters, of which unfortunately, they can all break, and break within the first months of being installed in a home. And look, most people have heard the saying, they don't make them like they used to, and they certainly don't make them to last as long as they used to. Now, of course, any of these components can break. However, when you buy them new, they come with the manufacturer's warranty, and that warranty is typically one to two years. And sure, a new house could have a little settling. You could have components that break. You could have a roof that leaks but it could be worse. You see, when a home is built, there are many people working on a home. There are many moving parts and lots of people working hand in hand, one right after the other, to build that structure. And let's face it, with anything, the more people you have working on one project, the more likelihood something is going to go wrong. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Wayne, that's why you have code inspectors, right? That's why when a house is built, you have guys and gals looking out for your best interest to make sure it's all stably sound and put together correctly. You see, unfortunately, people are human beings and we all make mistakes. And yes, it is true, things get missed. You see, for me, I learned the hard way. I had a house built one time, moved into the home, and for three months, everything was fine until one day, I smelt an odor coming from the bathroom. It wasn't me. 
Now, as you can see here, this piece of pipe is called the sewer line. It's the drain line for a shower. So once the shower's complete, that's where the water will go, the wastewater from your shower, down into the main sewer line and out to the street. So the house I had built was on what they call a three foot enclosed crawl space. And with that enclosed crawl space, the plumbing went down up underneath the house. So that led me to go underneath the house and check what the odor was. Come to find out the sewer line was not connected to the shower drain. And as a result, every time a shower was taken in that main bath shower, all of that water was going straight into that enclosed crawl space. Now, fortunately for me, it wasn't in the heat of the summer, so mold didn't set in or anything like that. It was an easy fix. I called the contractor, he fixed it, and there was no problem whatsoever. But I learned a valuable lesson from that new construction build. Well, listen, before we get into it, I'd like to ask you a question. Have you ever built a home or bought a new home where you've had to have the contractor come back out and fix something? Did they work with you? Were they cooperated with you? Was it a good or bad experience? We need to know. So the lesson I learned in building new construction is this. Don't be afraid to get the property inspected. Just because it's a newly constructed home, there's a lot of people working on the property and you're not going to offend anybody. Any good contractor will gladly say, sure, go right ahead, have it inspected because it helps them with the punch list. When you go through that house with a third party home inspector, they're gonna give you a list of things that should be addressed that perhaps the subcontractors missed and it makes it so much easier for your contractor to go through fix all of those things so when you close and move in, you're happy. Another concerning factor that we see among homeowners buying properties and new developments, especially when they're on the beginning stage, is they don't take the time or they're not given the actual copies of the bylaws to the subdivision in the community. You see, they don't have a copy of or have read a copy of the restrictive covenants and the restrictive covenants tell you what you are restricted to do or not do. So these bylaws and restrictive covenants can not only cause you a lot of stress, they can cause you a lot of money. You see, if you do something in a neighborhood and don't get permission to do so, or do it wrongly, then you can be fined. And not only can you be fined, but every month that goes past that you did not do or get permission or did something that doesn't coincide with those bylaws, those fines build up month after month. And those fines can be something as simple as painting your front door red because you just like the way it aesthetically looks. But if you don't get permission, or if the restrictive covenant says you can't paint your front door red and you paint your front door red without getting permission or you're not granted permission, yes, that's correct. You have to pay a fine. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be difficult or hard on HOAs. I think they're very important. I think the restrictive covenants and bylaws need to be in place. You need to have a little bit of order within a community to keep everything nice, clean, cohesive, because at the end of the day, you can't forget about this. The beautification of a community can make all the difference in the world when it comes to the value of your property. So when you're buying a new home or building a new home, simply do your research, talk to the neighbors, look at the restrictive covenants and the bylaws, have the property inspected. Do your homework with the contractor. Do a little bit of research on the contractor that you choose to build your property. And most importantly, get that home inspected and allow ample time written in the contract for you to inspect the property and be satisfied with that inspection. And make sure that the builder is gonna be okay making any improvements or repairs before you close.
But let me ask you this, what is it that's so appealing about new construction? What is it about being the first person to ever live in a new home? 